there's a good chance your house was built right on site. But it's likely that everything inside your house was built in a factory. Furniture, televisions, light switches, carpeting, you name it, even the car in your driveway. Chances are, if it's a new item, it was probably built in a factory by a robot. Could we one day live in comfortable, high-performance homes built by robots in factories? Well, I'm headed to Key, New Hampshire to meet a home builder that thinks so. Hey, Ted. Hey, Ross, how are you? Great to see you. Good to see you. You've worked with this old house on many projects over the years, most recently 10 years ago on the Weston Project. Yeah, actually, the Weston Project was a favorite one for us too, and always fun to work with this old house. All of the Weston house was built right here in these facilities. Okay. So that brings back good memories. Mm -hmm. Ted has always been known as a high-end home builder, but he's also started working on how to make high-performance, energy-efficient homes affordable for more people. That's meant investing heavily in automated manufacturing technology in a brand new facility. The key to running that automated machinery starts with some very sophisticated software. It begins here uh, with a design. And a designer like Curtis is working with the customer requirements, meeting their site, their budget, their program, that is number of bedrooms, bathrooms, mm -hmm. space requirements, large kitchen, small kitchen, et cetera. Sure. And he's able to design and assemble, or what we call compose a building, to their requirements. How many bedrooms, how many uh, bathrooms? I exactly. And, but we do that out of a standard kit of parts. So the components, that is the bathrooms and the kitchens and the stairways and the floor plans are all more or less standardized so that Curtis can then pick from a menu and compose the building that's custom, but all the parts are standardized. And from there, we go into what we call virtual fabrication, where we're essentially doing digital carpentry to complete the building. Can I see that? Absolutely. So Curtis uh, sends the 3D model over here to Keith, uh, who's one of our virtual fabricators. And the first thing he's going to do is actually break the panelization down as to how the building's going to be assembled on site. Gotcha. And that's the same way they're gonna be produced you know, in our production shop. Now, they are very sophisticated, including a lot of building science, a lot of engineering, a lot of research. So it's really important that we get that right, and it's also real complicated, but it is a pre-programmed algorithm, and so basically what Keith is doing is deploying that algorithm automatically through the plan, and then all the information, you know, comes through without Keith having to deploy a piece at a time. So he's assigning the properties of a wall to be your two by eight wall and it will populate, put studs and everything. That's all part of the algorithm. Exactly. Wow. Including, you know, the vapor barriers and the air barriers, every part, every piece, every nail. That's really cool. So from here, all of this information is then sent to our uh, production machines just down the street. All right, I can't wait to see those. Ross, welcome to our new manufacturing plant. Look at this, how big is it? It's about 110,000 square feet. Okay. And we have uh, 30 people or so operating the production line. And also, there are about 12 machines getting their instructions from the software you just saw. So where does the process start? It starts over here. All right. So here's our inventory. And just like on a job site, it's all stacked and ready to go except here, we're in a warm, climate-controlled environment, right. and so it's all well protected. Okay, and there's a machine here that's, that's gonna pick the wood? It, it picks the wood and loads the machine for what we need to cut next. And Ross, you'll also notice most of our material is engineered, glue lamb or TJI, that kind of thing, yeah. because the machine really wants that kind of precision sure. for the accuracy it can achieve. And it's stronger. It's, and it's much stronger as well. Once all the material is loaded on the machine, it goes here. The CNC cutting and shaping machine is really key to everything that we're doing. It does all the cutting, shaping, drilling, notching for every part, piece that goes into the building. So all cutting and drilling is made here. And the precision is what we count on. What happens here controls the precision for the rest of the process. The last operation of the machine is an inkjet printer, and that's really important. Because as you can see, with this label, we now know where in the building it goes. 
I mean, this is like ready to assemble furniture. Exactly, except this furniture is livable. And over here is the wall assembly. And as you can see, the, there's a top plate that Alex has already pulled in. Bottom plate is on the right. Mm -hmm. The wall will be assembled on the flat. He'll be pulling in the studs one at a time, the window and door openings one at a time, and then the machine takes over and nails everything, positions everything so it's accurate, square. Wow, and, and all through that same software. All through the same software. Cool. After the wall is framed, it comes over to this station where the sheathing is applied. Okay. Zach's going through a process here where he'll be applying the construction adhesive. Then he'll be able to pick up the last piece of sheathing with this vacuum lift. Got it. And that saves his back. Yeah, as you said, that makes it easy. Yeah, it makes it easy. And then the multifunction bridge takes over and will automatically do all the nailing. Trim the roof opening and the perimeter of the panel so it's finished. Wow, look at that thing go, that's quick. It is quick and accurate. Then the wall moves down the line to the butterfly table where it is then flipped over to expose the open base to blow the insulation in. This is our insulation delivery machine. Uh, that hopper is filled with cellulose insulation and it goes through the agitator into this plate where it's delivered into each stud bed. So what, the way this works is there's a recipe for each size stud bed based on the volume. Okay. And so the machine already knows how much insulation to put in into that stud bay to get the correct density so we have dense pack and therefore don't get any settling. Got it, got it. It gives you good quality control to make sure you got each bay filled to the right amount. And it's really important for the performance of the insulation that we can depend on that quality. Yeah. It's a great insulating material, it really is. After the walls are sheathed on both sides and taped, we use an upraising table to lift them into this gantry. Okay. And here's where we do the finish work, including the installation of windows and doors. And as you see, uh, Toby's using this robotic uh, vacuum machine uh, to lift a very, very heavy window. Well, that's easy on your back right there. What kind of windows are you guys using? Well, we're always using triple glazed windows uh, to match our energy performance. Once we've completed the panels in the factory, uh, then they're bundled uh, in this uh, shrink wrap. Mm -hmm. And they're staged in the bundles in the order that they're needed on the job site. And our goal is to be able to assemble a building in just three or four days and get to that weathertight shell really quickly. Gotcha. How many uh, buildings are we looking at? Well, I know these don't look like houses, <laughs> but there sure are <laughs> there are eight, eight to ten houses out here wow. at this point, ready to go. Well, I'm really impressed with the level of machinery that you have in there, the precision, the speed at which you can manufacture these panels. I mean, it's really amazing. One of the questions I do have to ask is, do you think those machines are taking away jobs that could be filled by the, by the average worker? Well, we look at it a little differently. Um, you know, these are good jobs um, with really good people who have good training and good skills, mm -hmm. and that's important. Uh, and our goal is just to plain use these factory conditions to raise the quality of building. Sure. And to be able to do more so that we can bring to the American public a better product more consistently. Like any at consumer an, good. A, like any consumer good. Yeah. You know, nearly everything that the consumer buys has been built in a factory or made in a factory. Mm -hmm. um, the missing link is the home itself. That's right, that's right. Well, Ted, always great to see you. Thank you so much for the tour. You're always two steps ahead, so keep it going. Thank you much, Ross. All right, All right. awesome. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.